This week's episode of Still Untitled is made possible with support from Microsoft Surface, introducing the new Microsoft Surface Laptop 3. With its beautiful touchscreen, you'll experience stunning graphics with razor-sharp resolution, now available with a 13.5 or 15-inch screen. And with the latest processors, there's no project that the Surface Laptop can't handle. It's both light and powerful, so you can get more done on the go. Visit surface.com slash laptop3 to learn more. That's surface.com slash laptop three. Welcome to Still Untitled, the Adam's House Project. I'm Will. I'm Adam. And I'm Norm. Well, so hello, we're everybody. We're in here. It's a, yeah. it's a regular thing. <laughs> it's it's going to be a regular from the bunker every Wait, time. Hold on. Oh. I, gotta, I, need, I, gotta... I need a new chair. That's what I've realized over the past two weeks of doing this and doing multiple podcasts. I don't have a good... I'm, I'm sitting on a stool. Uh-huh. And a stool, That's terrible. It's, it's, it's a terrible oh, idea really for a long podcast. It is very uncomfortable. It's not good for my back. So, no. uh, yeah. looking for chairs that don't have a big presence behind because I don't want to look like like Will. I'm I'm not a fan of the, the big office chair. Yeah, I like to have something a little bit visible. I like to have a little bit of a headrest too. So, um, um, my uh, the- my office chair at home is a Herman Miller desk chair. One of the ones with the chrome frame and the ribbed leather that goes down mm. it's the one that every hotel in the world buys the ripoff version of yeah for their and desk the reason Us. i don't like those chairs is i yeah. don't like, like armrests either oh like, i, I oh. like a stool because i can cross my legs i can move around like the armrest it gets in the way yeah. See, I need the oh, armrest. I, arm I gotta have an. I, 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 I've got a steel case gesture, and I've got full arm articulation. They go up, they go down, they go in, they go out, they pivot. I can lean back, I can lean forward. It's, it's all the. Look, it's a command too station. Much, too too much range of motion. Too many. Too many this, notes. These are all uh, new considerations as we're now <laughs> into the third week of this new normal. Uh, for those of us in the Bay Area, it was just announced this morning. We're going to be doing this for till you know end of April, beginning of May. So uh, that's why I'm thinking about things like, like chairs. chairs. Did you yeah. see that that work from home supplies are now like webcams? Webcams are going for 250 or 300 bucks on eBay now because <laughs> the webcam, the bottom has fallen out of the webcam market or supply. <coughs> oh my god, people! Adam, are you feeling okay? I You're am. Coughing just, a lot I, over there, buddy. Well, we had a couple of we had a couple of rainstorms this weekend, and this morning, like clockwork, we had a nice pollen bloom. And even though I took a claret, and my my nose has been a leaky faucet all day long. I've been hitting the flonays real hard this week. It's real exciting oh. stuff down here at the Smith household. Ah, God, just yeah, kicking my ass. Oh, well, sorry it's about hard that. Hard to get any work done while you. I mean, and my nose will just be raw tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Will. What is your strategy for your beard? Are you going to grow it out as a quarantine beard? <laughs> it's um, not a judgment thing. I just I'm curious. So last th- last week would have been the week that traditionally, if I was on my business, I would have gone to get the haircut. So the the hair is getting higher by the. I'm going to look like Conan O'Brien in another week or two. And the beard for a while, I thought I was going to do like a like a mask trim. So I could just suction the mask onto the air, the clean skin area down the middle. Um, but at this point, I'm just not ever leaving the house again, it seems like. So it doesn't matter really what my beard looks like. Uh, I've been, I've been <laughs> doing light oil and a brush after a shower, lest it wow. be a frizzy, grizzly Adam's beard, because it is large. Uh, and unfortunately, well, I don't have, I don't have uh, the, my trimmer doesn't have things big enough for where I'm at now. So I have to freehand it. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I was really lucky in that three weeks ago, I did an appearance uh, for one of the cable networks, not Discovery, but I did an appearance on a show. And because I was heading down to LA to be on television for the first time in a while, I actually uh, managed to sneak in an appointment with my hairdresser, nice. Marion. And uh, so she gave me a haircut two and a half weeks ago. I was like, I got a haircut four days before we all went under. That's really good. That's good timing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if we anticipate this lasting, you know, it's going to be over a month, maybe two months. At some point, uh, depending on how regularly you normally get your hair cut, you know, for me, it's about once a month. You're going to have to make a choice. Do you let it, you grow it out and just have it yeah. be the signifier of the quarantine time? Or do you start watching YouTube videos and have your partner work on it? 
Oh right? no, I, no, 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 no! Don't make, no. don't make your, don't make Danica do that to you, Norm. It's a bad idea. No, because um, she'll enjoy messing you up. She's she she wants no, to she learn. Do that? She, no, 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 no! It's not that she would delight in screwing Norm up, but she would consider it a learning exercise because she likes learning new skills. And yeah. she would use Norm as her as her hairdressing doll, and it might and it might not work. I, you know, it's, it's anybody's guess. I, I've got I've got the idea here. This is a <laughs> billion. Dollars. I hesitate to put this out of the podcast because it's such a fantastic idea. We need to repurpose some of your spacesuits, get the hairdressers in them, and bring people in one cleanup <laughs> at a time. Oh they can God. wear the, they can wear the Mercury helmet in the background. They'll be totally clean. Everything's going to be great. We can all get nice, good haircuts. We'll look good. I'll again. tell you, I've been surprised in my grooming habits during the uh, uh, the sheltering in place and that I'm shaving every morning. Oh, um, my dad stopped shaving for the first time in 30 years, and it's terrifying. Well, look, I mean, because I was on a TV show where I, I had, a, you know, over Christmas, I usually had three and a half weeks off. I would grow a break beard like mm -hmm. like celebrities do when they have shows and they have to keep groomed. And yeah. I delighted in like, oh, it's my break beard. And now I'm like, I don't want to get into uh, staying up till two in the morning, sleeping till noon kind of thing and all this, all this falling apart. So I've been really like assiduously waking up at nine every day and shaving every single day. No, it's, it's like putting on real pants. It's part of the routine, <laughs> right? I, I think I, I, I've decided, you know, sweats are great for, I, that's actually how I'm differentiating between the weekend and non-weekend. Sweats on weekend, real pants. <laughs> Thanks, Will. For I'm wearing us. pants, guys. I'm wearing pants. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's those little things. No matter what, no matter what day it is, you know that I'm wearing Bloodstones, blue jeans, and black shirt every yeah. single day, all day long. I haven't, I haven't worn a non-elastic waistband in about 14 days at this point, probably. So nice. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah we. We went to ground, I think, three days before they, three days before they called it. So yeah, this is like day seventeen or eighteen for us. Yeah, we're. Yeah. I think Gina said we're at twenty four, twenty five today. I can't remember. Wow. How have your yeah. other, at this point, like body changes? Like you know, <laughs> are you eating better? Are you, you know, feeling I, I've like I've lost five sunlight? pounds. Um, yeah, you I'm know, down without. With you without all that restaurant butter because we ate out a lot beforehand um i find that like you know julia will make a beautiful chicken salad or 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 something delightful in the fridge that you can eat for a few days and i'll be like for dinner i'll put some chicken salad on a piece of toast and split it and like that's suddenly fine for dinner with a snack later on and that's probably half the amount of calories i normally eat Mm. I I didn't realize how much um I didn't I didn't realize uh how much a salt and butter we were eating in the food that we were buying at restaurants and I also didn't really appreciate um how much time well uh how much our l lunches are hard it turns out because most of our lunches I mean we have a 7 year old sweet lunch every day oh right 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 yeah. otherwise um but like God. A lot Damn of that stuff kid. Is bread is bread dependent, right? So we're like, yeah, yeah. Like we have one week of sandwiches, and then week two, we're like, what are we gonna do for lunch today? Oh, let's do yogurt parfaits today because granola keeps for a long time. And <laughs> I mean, we're trying to do groceries every other week just so we don't put unnecessary <laughs> trips out and and or load on delivery systems and all that stuff. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I find it's the opposite for me. I'm snacking more and there's a direct relationship between how much news I'm reading and how much candy I'm having and chocolate. Oh, and, and that's sorry, bad. No. Yeah. Um, I am meeting my feelings at night. <laughs> Certainly uh, having snacking up on the sugar. Hold on. <laughs> um, I do have one interesting physical change, which is that this, Julia this pointed just, out. Just to be clear. Yeah. All this coughing and sneezing is making me very anxious, Adam. If you could cool I know. with the allergies, that would be great. Okay. I wish I, I wish I could. I wish I could. I'm hiding a zombie bite. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Um, so uh, you're clean, Julia, right, man? You're clean. Uh, Tell totally me you're clean. clean. Julia points out. I'm holding into the coming into the camera. She points out that there's like this that my brow well, is a, now a little bit of a furrow in my brow that wasn't there before. Wow. And. Yeah, she's like, it's really intense because you are a light, you are a light person. You, you, you have a certain approach to the world. She said, for the last two plus weeks, 
it's been a little darker and that's been a real change. We we talked about this a little bit last week, but Gina and I have stopped talking about anything news related after nine o'clock now. And that's really I, good. I am like, if, if I pick up a screen after nine o'clock, it's to play a game or to do a crossword puzzle or to read a book. Oh, not, you know, my yeah. screen time thing this week said that I'm down to only like 18 hours a day. <laughs> yeah, my screen time. Let's see. The first week we were inside, my screen time was the highest it's ever been at like, <laughs> yeah. Like it was like you've gone up ninety two percent this week. Congratulations! Yeah, exactly. And I'm gradually working my way back down to my my pre uh, shelter in place numbers. So, hey, what's that, well, what's that on your finger, Adam? What, yeah. What oh, this. <laughs> oh wow, wow! Family show, yeah. man. Um. So yeah, I tweeted about this over the weekend. I had an accident here in the shop on Friday. We're recording this on Monday, so accident plus three. Um, I was, did you see that tweet storm I put out, Will? I, I, I saw the tweet, but I figured we'd probably talk about it. So I did not read it. I did not read that. All tweet. right. Well then here I'm you coming go. Coming in cold. Yeah. Uh, Friday, I was not sure what to work on. And I remembered that my lathe has had this problem. My lathe has, uh, about 11 dials that change different parts of its speed. And the main dial for the spindle speed uh, has four settings. Uh, well, eight settings, but four on the primary uh, arm. And I lost one. Like, I could get it into three settings, but not all four. And it's been like, a... Is this like ahead. a transmission thing where it has like a transmission inside and the gears spin it? Okay. Exactly. And there's a, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, and it looks actually similar to a car transmission, albeit smaller. And I lost one of my gears. And so I thought, okay, you know what, Friday, I'm going to take a chance and solve this problem, which involved like removing all the cabinetry from around the lathe and then unpacking and popping off the top, which hadn't been popped off in 20 years because it had been restored. And so I'm like literally cracking through a layer of Bondo in order to get right. to it. And I open it up and I look down into this oil filled gearbox. And I realize, oh, that is nothing but a meat grinder. And so I go over to the main breaker box of the cave and I turn off the breaker to the lathe so that I can put my hands inside of it and work inside. And I spend about 90 minutes moving stuff back and forth, using a flashlight, taking measurements, trying to figure out why I've lost this gear. And then I, I see it. I was gonna say, is this something that like you you open this up and you look at it and you're like, okay, this is a trans. This is I know how this. I see how this works. Or is this something where you're like changing dials on the front and looking to see what happens inside and like looking where yep. things connect and figuring it out? It, it it's basically I'm looking at the main linkage for the dial that's got the problem and I'm moving okay. it and I'm watching what's happening and now I'm sort of getting the gears to touch and see. Oh, and then I see. Oh, there's a space where there probably shouldn't be. And then what I see on the other side is that um, this bearing, which should be seated into a cast iron wall, is now like half the way out of that wall. So there's mm. a half inch of extra space. And that's uh -huh. what's caused my, my... So now I'm tasked with pressing a bearing back in when I only have access to it from 12 inches above and I can't actually hammer it. I mean, wow. I'd have to drill a hole in the side of my cast iron casing, which is no. definitely something I might do to and yeah. then plug it back up. But I, I think about a bunch of different options and I eventually weld and manufacture a little plate that goes in and allows me a leverage with a wedge and I hammer and lo, I actually move that bearing back into its original position. Oh, nice. I mean, these are, these are hard problems to solve and you, you go down the road to solve them and you're not sure that it's gonna work. So when I saw the bearing move, I was super super chuffed i felt very accomplished right like i had solved this intractable problem and so i get the bearing back i check operation i start to put the machine back together and i'm like now i'm feeling good it's like three o'clock on a friday man i got <laughs> two two or three more hours in the shop i'm gonna clean this puppy up so i plug it i turn the power back on i start cleaning it up and now i'm taking like a wire brush on the lead screw and getting rid of all the dust and I take a piece of cloth and I'm putting it around one of the lead screws oh, and the cloth gets caught and it pulls my hand in between two lead screws. You're lucky you have a finger still. And I had a, I had a, 
a very short. Well, there was a period of uh, time before just, it dragged my hand in that I knew that that was the likely outcome. And I will was tell you that. Yeah. Left hand. Left hand? Right hand. Left hand. Left hand. Oh, well, okay. That's good at least. Um, there was a moment, and I actually talked to my wife about it last night. And I, I haven't talked about this a lot. The fear, because I've injured myself many times in my life. I've had lots of stitches. I've gone to the hospital many times. And every time you go, you feel a certain amount of shame and, 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 and anger at yourself for the injury. Well, you, you always can identify the mistake you made the moment you, like the moment after the mistake oh, yeah. is too late. Yeah. Oh, you're like, yeah, oh, yeah. this is a bad choice. No, I mean, they're literally, <laughs> if I was being filmed at the time, I believe I even went, no, 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 no. I even, <laughs> I even did the reality well, denying sound. I mean, it's extra scary because you were there by yourself. So if you'd gotten tra stuck, you were in a real bind. So I was moved, my hand is being pulled towards the machine. And yeah, I'm like, I could lose my whole head. I have no idea what's about to happen. And this is the worst thing that I've ever been party to. And I really, I this is worse my... than the upside down car, you think? Yeah. Wow. Lathes are terrifying. Lathe, um, lathe, the lathe yeah. is the thing that scares me more than anything else in your shop, except for maybe that disc grinder, which can really chuck something across the <laughs> across the room yeah, if you're not careful. But, but the, like, I'm working on a part that's only spinning at like 40 RPM. It's not. Yeah. It's not. It's not a terrifying speed, and that's like a bandsaw. It's deceptive about how safe you are being near it, and. To be honest, over the past three days, I've had, and it's mostly at the end of the night when I'm like trying to fall asleep, I've been flashing to that moment of the here it goes. And that feeling, that that adrenaline rush of, of total terror. Am I going to lose a finger? And worse, does that mean I have to go to an ER at this moment in time? I'm an I'm the asshole that's going to suck up their time with this dumb mistake yeah. and then make myself exposed, which means instantaneously I'm going to have to camp out here at the cave for two weeks yeah, and like wave to my wife and my mom and my house. Like everything oh. about this is terrible. <laughs> if, if I brought my mom here and then was like, well, honey, I'm going to be out of the house for the next 14 days. That would probably, that might be a divorce. Like my, my mom and my wife get along really well, but 14 days is a long time. What, so, um, so how'd you get out of it? How'd you say, what well, happened? So I'm being pulled towards it, pulled towards it, pulled towards it and survival mechanism. I yanked my hand and my hand comes out. And now I experienced the second moment of total terror. And please understand it's taken me all weekend to work up the courage to talk about this. I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to, I, I, didn't want to share this story because I still feel a fresh amount of shame and fear over it. Like it's like hurting your body and carving up your body is awful. Uh, I mean, the, the mistake isn't making the mistake. It's it, it, you shouldn't, you don't need to be ashamed. Everybody makes mistakes. The mistake is I know. The, the thing don't, it's, it's only a mistake if you don't learn from it. Right. I, I know no, somebody smart totally, said that. Totally, totally, totally. Uh, and yet that feeling at the, the, the fresh feeling right afterwards is, is real. Um, so I pulled my hand out and now I experienced the second moment of terror, which is the inspection. How yeah. bad is it going to be? So I hold my hand up and, uh, Will or Norm, would either of you like to see what I was looking at? Yeah. No. Send it. Send me the picture. Oh, it can't be that bad or else you wouldn't have taken the picture. Right. That's but, yeah, exactly. Right. You were, you, you had the, the wherewithal to get your phone out with your right hand. I take a picture document. of every single, I take a picture of every single injury. This is by far the worst injury I have ever sustained in a job. Okay, here we go. Okay. Here so we go. for audio listeners, Adam is texting Will. I have the picture. text. I'm going to open it right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've seen worse. That's pretty fucked up, though. Well, let me tell you, if I bent my finger, I was looking at my joints and my tendons. Oh, I, I, I have. There's a lot was, of meat I there. Un I unbuttoned the, the front suit of my finger is what I did. The zigzag is the bad thing yeah. there. And oh, also you no, can see it's... the fat and, and all the connective tissue under there. Yeah, that's real bad. I'm 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 a little scared that you didn't go to the doctor on this one because there's a lot of stitch like this is a stitch situation for sure. Oh yeah, no, that's twenty or thirty stitches right there. Did you do them or did you just seal it up and call it a day? Well, I, let me get on with my store. Okay. okay. <laughs> 
Before we continue on with the show, I want to let you know that support for Still Untitled comes this week from Microsoft Surface, introducing the new Microsoft Surface Laptop 3. With its beautiful touchscreen, you'll experience stunning graphics with razor-sharp resolution. Now available with a 13.5 or 15-inch screen. And with the latest processors, there's no project the Surface Laptop can't handle. It's both light and powerful, so you can get more done on the go. Visit surface.com slash laptop3 to learn more. That's surface.com slash laptop3. Now back to the show. Like, okay, just to be clear, from a, from a, I'm not a doctor, not a medical professional. From first aid stuff that I've done over the years, that is the very, that is like, 99% of people, I would say, yeah, you need to go to the doctor right now when you see Oh, no, that. no, no. That is, so it, it, in every injury in a shop, there is when you go to inspect the wound, the question you're asking isn't how bad is the wound, it's how much is this going to change my day, week, yeah. month, right? Or life, and, yeah. And, yeah. And sometimes it's a, it's, a, it's a fence post. Should I go get stitches? Shouldn't I? And I've had, like, I cut myself on a bandsaw about, eight years ago, 10 years ago. And the second I did it, I'm like, hospital? I knew without even looking at it that this was a yeah. hospital visit. Fan this fan one, fan. this one, 100%, this is a hospital visit. This is totally stitch worthy. Um, but again, at this moment in time, I don't want to get around doctors. Well, I don't want to waste their time. I don't want to expose myself. I, I was going to say, this is the threshold for, do I take a picture of this before I have to sit down? Right. Well, like, so this is the other thing is, and I've talked about this. I have a, I have a fainting reaction when I cut my hands specifically, I yeah. often faint and I, so being very cognizant of that, I, I, I tightened up my core, my solar plexus to keep blood in my head. And I called my mom. I knew my wife was actually working. I knew she was doing, uh, doing her job. Um, and my mom was at the house and I knew Fridays she does not uh, she does not see patients. My mom is a psychotherapist who's been seeing her regular patients on the phone. And I knew that she was not working. So I called her. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I'm calling my mommy. How about this? So I called her and I'm like, hey, could you come to the shop? And she's like, yeah, is everything OK? And I'm like, yeah, just come to the shop. <laughs> so about 10 minutes later, she arrives and I'm not all I'm doing at that point <laughs> is irrigating it. I have medical, I have medical saline, I have iodine and I have hydrogen peroxide and I'm spraying it down, cleaning the rest of my hands. Uh, I got towels out, I got toilet paper out, I got all the things that I need and I'm just making sure that this cut is as clean as I can possibly make it. Wait, and it's the inside, right? It's the inside, it's the not inside. the outside. Yeah, yeah it's oh, right that's there. The, that's the, oh, you okay. didn't waste any toilet paper on your damn hand, did you, Adam? That stuff's more precious than gold. So. So at, just as I finish irrigating it, my mom shows up and she, I pick up, I open the door and this is traditionally the moment when I'm going to faint. It's like once I've taken care of getting some help, that's yeah. often when I boom. So I see her, I give her a hug. I bring her into the bathroom and say, I, I need you to be here with me. And my mom says, yeah, you need to eat something. And she gets me an energy that is, bar. Yeah, that sounds She's good. great. Uh, her father was a surgeon. She knows. And then she gets me a Snapple. She's like, drink this whole Snapple. <laughs> and this is perfect. I did. I, I needed love your some mom. Food. Your mom is I, so yeah. good. She was fabulous. And uh, I didn't let her see it. I didn't, you know, uh, you don't want to see your kid's thing. You don't want to see your kid's injury. No. Uh, um, and so this was a cut that was completely addressable with butterfly closures. Okay. Mm. I mean, it looks, uh, it does, it, it's it, it's bad, but it is not. Yeah, it's bad. As long as you watch it, make sure it doesn't get infected. It'll be fine. That's the thing, and there's no infection. It's been I'm, every day. It's a, it's a little bit better. It's a little more movable. I have no nerve damage, shockingly, anywhere on the wow. finger. Wow. I know. Uh, it's on the inside, which means that when I bend my finger, I'm not opening the wound at all. So. It's in every way, it's an ideal placement of a cut that you might not have to go, might not want to go to the doctor for. Yeah. Um, it's a one in a million did, shot, Adam. Did looking at it on your phone or through the viewfinder of your phone distance you from the reality of it um, like when you were taking a picture? Just a tad. Look, I also have sutures here and I considered suturing myself up. 
It's a bad I, idea. It's always, unless you're Mark Watney or you're in Australia, uh, Antarctica or something, that's always a bad idea. The thing is, is that to me, it is the last resort. Like, yeah. it is the last resort. I just don't know how I'm going to do it. I'm going to have to go. I've got hemostats here. I've got everything I need to sterilize and set it up. But in my own skin, I I just couldn't be sure I wasn't going to vomit or throw up. And I'm not sickened by looking at pictures of my injuries. And blood doesn't make me ill. But I just didn't know how I was going to respond. In fact, so I called Tom Sachs that night. And he was like, did you stitch it up? And I'm like, no, no, I didn't do it. <laughs> I love Tom. Uh, but I've, Tom's the best. I've been doing butterfly closures. Uh, I've been redressing the outside every day. Um, I redid the butterflies once. And yesterday, I actually had the situation where the coagulation happened into the bandage. So I had to do a lot of trimming and, and stuff to get it away. And now I put a new skin on it. Uh, okay. And that should keep me from bonding with my own bandages. Uh, basically, it's doing stunningly. And I can actually move this. I have most of the movement of this hand and it has been remaining protected and i know this looks filthy but inside it's all really nice and clean did you uh do you have a do you have a, a status update picture for me can i see what it looks like today or are you taking, are you taking yes daily pictures? you can <laughs> let's let's Hold see no i'm let's taking see the daily and pictures okay so the second pic i'm gonna send you okay there's two picks. One is day two, and the the last pick is day three. The little bathroom the, lobster in the background really sells this. Just to just to be clear, like the background, that? the bathroom. Oh yeah, it looks a ton better. The so the one where it's facing day, up is day two, and the one where it's facing no, down is day three. Facing down is day two. Facing up is day three, and it's really closing up well. Yeah, it looks good. Well, you're really lucky you didn't get your ring finger with that ring on. I don't know if you have the, Dude, have the ring on every day. Everything, everything about this. I am a lucky, 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 lucky man. Yeah. And I feel very guilty. I have survival guilt about surviving. <laughs> well, I, mean, I mean, so I actually just shot a piece for Tested about it, Norm, I, on my phone. I'll send you this. And we can cut it together because look, I, it's instructive. I, Whenever I have complicated feelings around something to do with shop practice, I figure it's reasonable to shoot something about it. I mean, this is this is stuff that everybody with a shop faces, right? I, I, we, Norm and I have a mutual friend who got really excited about woodworking, and he bought some chisels and he started doing stuff by hand. And he's like, "I'm going to go take some classes," and he went to a woodworking shop near him, and he walked in there and he was talking to the old timers who were hanging out, and they were like, "Oh yeah, we do lessons on Thursdays." And he started counting fingers in the room, and there's all these guys that have been doing woodworking stuff for 40, 50 years, and all of them are missing at least one knuckle, and he's like. I'm going to stick with the chisels. The chisels seem good. <laughs> yeah, it is part of, it is something, it's part of every shop and it's part of working in a shop. And, you know, when I tweeted the story on Saturday, um, somebody tweeted back every injury they've had was during reassembly because it's when their guard is down. And that makes complete sense. Yeah. Uh, well, that totally yeah. tracks to me. Oof. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad it's okay. Keep 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 track. Oh. You know, keep up on it, Adam. That that you're a lucky oh, yeah. man. Uh, and you know, I I'm well prepared. I have tons and tons of first aid equipment. Uh, it's, I'm I'm very grateful that I'm a kind of secret prepper. Uh, now public. <laughs> yeah, I think we're all preppers now. Um, the only the the thing that scares me about the lathe more than anything is is getting sucked into it. You know, because we all wear hoodies and stuff like that all the time. And just like if when that thing's going, if you get pulled in there, it's the scariest thing in the world, I think. So. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. No, I have uh, I used to know this crazy artist named Barry Schwartz, the animal. His nickname was Animal. Uh, and Barry, at one point, <coughs> had this exposed patch on his scalp. And I was like, what happened? He's like, oh, I was using the drill press and his hair got caught in the drill press. Oh, Christ. <laughs> yeah. Ow. Yeah. Ow. Um, Norm, how um, are you doing? How, how, oh, how are you I was just going to say, this is a lot I'm for Norm. I will enjoy the tested comments of everyone sharing their terrifying, awful shop injury stories. How's yeah. it going, Norm? It, it, great now. Yeah. My life feels so much better. <laughs> yeah. um, Content warning of, those pictures, please, when you post them. Oh, yeah. Them. No, no, I'm not posting them. Um, I no, no, no. I mean to, the people in chat in comments. Oh, they always yeah. do. Yeah. 
uh, 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 thing one and thing two, both the boys wanted to see pictures. My wife did not, although she did ask to take a look at it when I was redressing it just to reassure herself. And it looks great. You're having somebody else smell it since your nose is stopped up, I hope, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it could not be healing better. I, I'm really good at taking care of the, uh, taking care of the, the injuries in my hands uh, and making sure they're infection free. Mm. So are you just working on a bunch of one hand projects this week? What's your, what's, what's going on in the shop? Uh, there? Actually out of the frying pan into the fire, <laughs> out of the frying pan into the fire. I've been working on the lathe today. Um, <laughs> mostly, mostly I, I, I had a second intractable problem, which is on the, uh, the cross slide was sticking and it turns out. So, uh, within a cross slide of a, of a lathe or a machine tool, um, you have a dovetail and the dovetail keeps everything together and you have screws that allow you to pressure that dovetail to have as little movement as possible. But there's also this long, um, I'm trying to remember what it's called, the gib arm or the gib, I, I'm terrible about this stuff. But there's a long tapered piece of metal along one side of the dovetail and there are two screws on either side of it. And because it's tapered, um, it allows you to precisely adjust everything about the, the dovetail so that as it wears, you can increase the pressure and, and keep it at a constant pressure. And when I took, off, took apart the cross slide this morning, I found that one of my old shop assistants uh, had, while working on the lathe, broken that cast iron long tapered piece and it was mm. floating and it meant that i couldn't pull my 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 cross slide oh. out all the way luckily he only cracked like the last half inch of it which means that i figured out a way to actually uh reintroduce the adjustability that i need and i literally just solved that problem about five minutes before this podcast and when we're done i'm putting it all back together and i'm going to go home and uh sleep <laughs> what are our lesson and our lesson is when you're putting it back together, you're Re-assembly. even more careful than when you were taking it apart. Wow. Exactly. No, it's it's Oof. it's it's yeah. Wow. Yeah. All I did was <laughs> put together some baby gates in the house. Oh yeah. <laughs> very simple <laughs> by it's comparison. The, it, he's mobile now, and so it's yeah. time oh, to yeah. climbing and yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been um I've... go ahead, Will. I was just say I've been doing some Glowforge projects and I'm building a robot to play board games. So that's that's oh. my project for the downtime. Oh, yeah, it's neat. been fun. Yeah. I want to mention one thing um because we're getting toward the end. I did finish the West Wing. I don't know if you're oh. continuing Ooh. watching that, Adam. Uh, i have a... actually we've now re- reverted to Aaron Sorkin and Tommy Schlamy's first show, Sports Night. And oh. we're uh, we're like a third of the way through season two now, and this is like I think the fourth time I've watched this entire this, the entire run of there's, that show. There's only what three or four seasons of that. It's short. Two seasons, no. twenty three okay. episodes and twenty two episodes. It's forty five. Oh, seem long. Four. Yeah, it's it's like twenty hours total to watch. It's the whole so thing. good. It's so it's good. So good. Yeah, it, I, I will nothing, say. Yeah. For West Wing and, and people who it's, you know, over 10 years old, the seventh season, I think it's fantastic. I think the introduction really? of some new actors, uh, they bring in Kristen Chenoweth, um, who's wonderful and lovely. Uh, Jimmy Smith is in it. Uh, there's um, a Hawkeye. John Goodman? Alan, uh, John Goodman is just a cameo for a few episodes, but he is a, oh, a okay. great character. John Goodman He's there plays the Speaker of the, of the House. Season. Yeah. He, he, yeah, I don't want to spoil if you haven't seen the yeah. show, but it's one of those things that as we're getting close to the end of the series, like a lot of these ensemble shows, you grow with these characters or you come to know them over a hundred and something episodes and you really fall in love with them. And it's really hard to say goodbye. I don't know if it's like reading yeah. a book and you're getting to the last chapter or so. And especially, you know, like a show like Mad Men. Right, you know, we yeah. get the last season. You see how far someone like Peggy's gone, you know, Roger and everyone. And the last like three or four episodes, you're like kind of savoring every scene because oh. they're wrapping up all the stories, and you're finding out you'll you'll never know where these characters are after the show ends. That you know the door is closed to your window, right yeah. into their world. Um, and the West Wing does something interesting. Where in the beginning of the last season, the very opening scene of season seven is a flash forward to three years later. And so they give you this tiny oh. five-minute glimpse mm. into three years later, 
as to who's married, who lives oh. where. And so you get that little peek into where they are. And it's very, if you're a sentimental person. Um, Do Donna and Christian Slater end up together? That's what I want to know. No, 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 no. <laughs> they, they don't. They're, they're, they are not OTP. They're not the one true pairing. Yeah, okay. they are, they, she is shipped with someone else. Um, but we finished the series. And the fun thing for me, though, is when I started it, I started on season two. Yeah. Danica, who's a big fan of the show and has seen it dozens of times, started me on season two, which <laughs> the assass- it's the cliffhanger assassination attempt on Bartlett and on Charlie. Yeah. And it's where yeah. Josh Lyman, uh, Bradley Whitford gets shot. So you started and- with the last episode of season one? Yes, exactly. Okay. And watched six seasons, essentially. But what was really fun is that now I have this entire season one that I have oh. not seen. And oh. I get to go back and watch what's essentially a flashback the way I'm experiencing it. And everyone's wow. a baby. And I get to see yeah. where the characters are They're all formulated so young. And, yeah. and where the actors haven't really locked into their portrayals of the characters like toby he's their essences of toby there and mannerisms that become his character and it's a real fun way to watch this show because it's all for me almost like bonus material yeah yeah Uh, oh my god what a great gift danica gave you and setting it up like that that's amazing okay And, and, and it's something that i think if you watch mad men you could get away with or or the west wing or star trek yeah, i mean yeah, it works yeah. for a lot of stuff yeah you could start on the second season and yeah the first couple episodes you're still going to be wondering who is this person i mean they, they maybe yeah, they yeah. reference something from early season you'll get through it but then when you come back it is really cuz you're you're the most emotionally invested by the end of the show yeah and yeah for so many so often you finish a show and you're like that's it i feel this hole in me now that i can't go back to that universe and but I have this gift of 22 episodes of revisiting it with zero consequence, and it's just it's chicken soup. Well, and plus, it's 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 one of those three things. Seasons oh, of sorry, not I'm... Sorkin, sorry. Plus, after three seasons of non Sorkin writing, you go back to the OG Sorkin and it's, writing. It's it's all Sorkin, exactly. Well, I mean, yeah. there's a, there's a thing that West Wing did that like a lot of shows miss. You know, the second <laughs> year, a lot of times with a sequel or a second season the people who are making the show and the people who are watching the show like two completely different things about like feel like the the thing that's important is are two completely yeah. different things and west wing didn't exact like west wing landed that pretty well but like lost is the is a classic example of like that second season being not well, exactly what the first season was what i liked about but the I mean, first season so apparently from what i understand of some of the inside baseball in lost that was also because within the structure of the people putting the show together there were disagreements about whether season to season there were disagreements about whether it was a soap opera or a science fiction drama right and some seasons one of those won and other seasons another one won um my big takeaway my big takeaway from watching west wing is how terrible men's fashion was back then (laughs) they were now all those gigantic suits everyone looks like david Byrne. Well, they did. They did a lot of um, yeah, politicians notoriously not great dress, especially political. No, no, aides, but I mean, in Josh Lyman in those big unconstructed jackets when he would look terrific in a three button. He's oh, sitting yeah. there with all this like ridiculous extra material and high waisted pants and skinny. Wa- oh, yeah. I mean, to- just terrible. Toby's yeah. Toby's high pants, man. Oh, oh you got to see. Great. You got to see Peter Krause's high pants uh, in Sports Night. It's hilarious. Oh wow! Yeah, I, I, I need to. I haven't watched that since it was on originally. I need to go back and watch it again. I think we have DVDs someplace. Dude, Sports Night hits the ground running so hard. It's so great. It's and uh, I've been meaning to go back and like your first season revisit, Norm. Just before Sports Night aired in 1998, uh, the New Yorker did a profile of Aaron Sorkin because they suspected this was going to be a big deal, and so you can read about the difficulties he was having with the network, trying to make a new kind of show, the battle about the laugh track and all of that stuff. So I've been meaning to go back to the New Yorker site and reread that article now that we're uh, that making great. our way through the second season. Awesome. Wow. Um, 
I do want to use also take a moment to uh, shout out some resources. I know we get a lot of questions and we have been getting questions on social media uh, about places that if you have a 3D printer, for example, that you can help because uh, there are some great resources and there have been, we've been like inundated with a lot, you know, there's so many different great groups working on their own solutions. And these um, are solutions for ventilator parts, but also face shields and other personal protection equipment that doctors and nurses are masks. asking for. Some people are sewing yeah. masks. Some people are using soda bottled pet plastic with 3D printed uh, visor stuff that fit existing pieces. Yeah, there's a ton of amazing ingenuity and creation going on. And, and, and with that also a lot of risk because of, there's not a lot of that validation happening because things are happening so quickly as to how safe things are to use. Uh, I want to point out Matter Hackers. They're a retailer that's in Southern California who sell uh, 3D printer filament and we're good friends with them, but they've put together a really good hub where uh, people with 3D printers and whether they're printing in PLA or PTG can print. PPE equipment. So face shields is the primary thing. Um, and also uh, they're connecting those people with the healthcare workers and Amazing. facilities who may want those. Uh, if you just go to matterhackers.com, the top link for COVID-19, that's right there. Uh, Prusa 3D, they're the maker of yeah. um, the 3D printer, very popular one, very good one. Uh, they have a great design for a face shield. Uh, it's a mount for a face shield. You have to pair it with uh, a laser cut shield uh, but that's what um that's linked as well um and then uh, there's a website uh get us ppe.org that's g-e-t-u-s-p-p-e.org uh and that's also connecting people these are six great hubs uh, as as resources um we awesome. we had uh kishore on the tech pod this week to answer questions people's questions about coronavirus and we talked about everything from like how to maintain your home quarantine and how to like how to handle groceries and how to handle packages that come in to, you know, questions like how long do we think this is going to last and how long are we going to be maintaining like socially distancing versus sheltering in place. Yeah. And, and we talked through all of that at uh, techpod.content.town. Awesome. And even if you don't have access to equipment, you know, there are plenty of places you can donate directly to families in need. Uh, and so you can go to give directly.org. That's a great place where you can, again, just, if you just want to use PayPal and donate, uh, it's all very appreciated. Food That's banks awesome. need a ton of help right now. Um, yeah. A lot of local support stuff needs a ton of help wherever you happen to be. So anything you can do is good. But uh, if you can't do right. anything, just stay home, please. That's all you yes, have to do. Your civic duty is staying home. Sit, Netflix and chill, man, all the time. That's all you have to do. <laughs> read some books. We should find some books to read. We should uh, I can't pick read. out a book and... I can't read. Why can't you? I, I, I just don't have the attention span. I, I haven't been able to read. I have like three books on my bedside table. What am I saying? I have like a dozen, but I have three yeah. that I'm actively trying to read. And I, I read like two pages and I'm like, I, I can't do it. I, it's my motivation also for making stuff has also been really low, which is why I'm fixing tools here. Uh, yeah. It's, um, it, I, and I'm going to shoot something this week that talks to that. Uh, Again, because I think it's an interesting practice. I think it's an interesting question, and I, I want to kind of unpack it a little bit. The 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 attention span while reading thing is definitely something that's happened to me that has literally never happened in my life. Like, there's never been a time I couldn't pick up a book and get lost in it. And it's yeah. it's it's newfound anxiety finding new ways to fuck you. I think. Well, but, and, um, and I think that's the biggest thing is the recognition about how much the stress and anxiety are wearing upon us. And, you know, I've talked a lot about when I stopped drinking eight, seven or eight years ago as part of the stress management of hosting Mythbusters and producing it. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I've had a lot of time to inspect my own stress and see how it changes my, my, my reactions and my, my wellness. And on this one, on this, in this moment, like, to me, getting my, my seven and a half to eight hours of sleep every night is so important. If I miss the mark, I'll have a nap in order to make sure it's up to date because yeah. it's, the, like, it's the best thing you can do for your immune system is do everything you can to lower your stress level. Yeah. yeah. Um, for, for me, activities that require full concentration are incredibly helpful. Like Yeah, yeah. Just stuff that, whether we're playing a board game with Gina or working on a laser project or something like that, something that requires full attention is so precious to me right now. And it lets yeah. that stuff go away. 
Yeah. So. All right. Uh, well, but I will try start. and read this week, Norm, so we can okay. talk about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let us know what you're reading. We'll, we'll talk about it next week, and then you know we'll be doing this for at least a couple more weeks, and maybe we can pick a book and and um and share with people out there. The book club. And we finally, yeah, do that do third like episode that. of uh of the uh, three body problem. Hey, that's right. Oh. Read uh, Dark Dark Forest, and I don't know if I can make yeah. it through a thousand that's pages end. of C. Shen Lee. But... <laughs> uh. So wait, I've been working on this. Uh, we should pronounce it. We should speak it the other way. Liu. Oh, Liu Cixin. Cixin, right? It's the T S in the front and the Cixin, right? Please, Chinese speakers, correct me because I love this author so much. I want to make sure I am saying his name correctly. Uh, Liu Cixin. Tell me how well I did. <laughs> And on that note, uh, we'll see everyone next week. Hope everyone stay safe, stay indoors, yes. wash your hands. Yeah. Uh, and Be gentle you know, with each other. We're all yes. packed in like sardines and it's intense. Yeah. Yeah. Not be, just be kind. physically, emotionally. Yeah. Psychologically, all of the above. Uh, and share some pictures, stories of your own yeah, workshop totally. injuries. Uh, <laughs> All right, Adam. I think uh, um, this is going on Tuesday. You oh might be God. doing a live stream. Uh, I'm doing Pacific. a live stream today from one to two, one from one to three p.m. Uh, and I think I may be taking some questions this time. Ooh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So cool. that'll, that'll be that'll be fun. Um, it is delightful as always to see your guys' faces, even if it's, it's only always on video. a pleasure. Yeah. All right. Have a good week, we'll guys. See you next, see you next week. Bye, Thanks, everybody. everybody. Bye.